Live from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering Mobile World Congress 2017. Brought to you by Intel. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Palo Alto, California, covering Mobile World Congress, which is later in Spain right now in Barcelona. It's getting close to bedtime, or if you're a night owl, you're out hitting the town because Barcelona stays out very late or just finishing your dinner. Uh, of course, we're bringing all the CUBE coverage here, news analysis, commentary, and of course, reaction to all the big mega trends. And our next two guests is Guy Churchwood, who's the president and CEO of Data Turret, formerly of EMC. You probably recognize him from the CUBE, from EMC World, and many times he's been on CUBE alumni, and Fo Huang, who's the co-founder and chief strategy officer of Data Torrent, co-founder, uh, one of the founders, and also one of the early, early Yahoo engineers. I think he was the fourth engineer at Yahoo going way back in the 90s, built that uh, to a large scale. And Yahoo is credited for the invention of Hadoop and many other great big data things, and we all know Yahoo was data full. Guys, welcome to theCUBE special coverage. Great Thank to you. see you. Appreciate Thank it. you so much. So I'm um, psyched that you guys came in because one, two things. I want to talk about the new opportunity of data turret and 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 get some stories around the large scale experience that you guys have dealing with data because you're in the middle of where this is intersecting with Mobile World Congress. Right now, Mobile World Congress is on a collision course between cloud ready, classic enterprise network architectures with consumer mm. all happening at the same time and data with Internet of Things, is that going to be at the center of all the action? So, uh, these are now devices, so that's the core theme. So, uh, Guy, I want to get your take on, what attracted you to, to, to data uh, torrent? What's, what was the appeal uh, for the opportunity? You mean, the, the, uh, the you know, why am I here? Why have I just yeah. arrived? Yeah. I, I mean, I've always been data assessed. I mean, you know yeah. this from the from the days of running the storage business over the data protection. Before that, I was doing data analytics and security uh, forensics. Um, and, you know, if you look at, as you said, is uh, whether it's big data or cloud and the immersion of IoT, uh, one thing's for sure, for me, it was never about big data as in a big blob of stuff. It was all about small data sprawl. And, and the world's just getting uh, more diverse by the second. And you can see that by you know mobile uh, world right um, the challenge then you have is companies they need to uh, analyze their business and you know in other words data analytics about 30 years ago when I was working for BA systems I remember meeting a, a general of the army and uh, and he said the next war will be won in the data center not on the battlegrounds and so you really understand he was that, right about that yeah and, and and you have to be very very close so in other words you, you, you companies have started to obsess about what I call the do loop and that really means when data is created and then ingesting the data and getting insight from the data and then actioning on that. And, and it's that do loop. And what you want to do is you want to squeeze that down to uh, sub-second. And if you can run your analytics at the pace of your business, um, then you're in good shape. If you can't, you lose. And, and that means either yeah. from a security perspective or you're not going to win the bids the, in, in any shape or form. That's not So a speed is critical. Can, yeah, speed, I mean, and, and, and people say speed, I mean, speed and accuracy, yeah. Yeah, because what you don't want to do is to run really, really fast <laughs> and, you know, fall off cliff. Um, so you really need to make sure that speed's there and accuracy's there. And in the good old days when I was running security forensics, you could either do complex end processing, which was a very small amount of information coming in and then querying it like crazy, or things like log management, where you would store data at rest and then look you at it afterwards. Yeah. But but now with the paradigm of you know all the technology catching up, so whether that's you know um, the disk speeds that you get and the storage and the processing, mm -hmm. and things like Hadoop with the clustering, you you now break that paradigm where you can collect all the information from a business and process it before you land the data, and then get the insight out of it and then action. You know, and, and so that was my thing of looking at saying, look, this whole thing is going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, in, in last year. You and at large scale too. I mean, what you're talking about in, in, in the theoretical side makes a lot of sense, but also putting that into large scale is even more challenging. Yeah, I mean, we had, uh, <coughs> when I was going through the process of um, dating, you know, to see whether this was a company <laughs> that made sense, I chatted to one of our um, investors and they're also a customer. And, and I said, you know, why did you choose uh, Data Torrent? And they said, well, look, we um, tested everything in production. We tested all the competitive products out there and we broke everything except data torrent and actually we tested you in production up to a billion events per second and you didn't break and we believe that that quantity is something that you need as a stepping stone to move forward and what use cases IoT. does that 
fit for. Just give me some anecdotal you know, billion uh, transactions. You know, at that, that, that speed, what's some use cases that really take advantage of that? Well, uh, and they were mastering in what I would call industrialization of IT. So in other words, once you get into things like turbines, wind mm -hmm. generation, you know, train parts, uh, and, and you know, the, it, we're going to be very, very soon looking out of a window and seeing. So is it flow data? Is it the speed of the flow? Or is it the feed of all the calculations or both? It, it's a bit of both. And, and, and what I'll do is I'll give Fu a chance, otherwise we'll end up <laughs> chatting about it. And, and it's <laughs> Fu, nice come on, you're the star, co-founder. Yeah. <laughs> when you st found this company, obviously you, you had a background at Yahoo, which you built from scratch because that was a first mover uh, opportunity, Web 1.0, as they say, yeah. but evolved up. And then you know, everyone used Yahoo Finance. Everyone used Yahoo Search as a directory early on. Thank you. And then the, everything just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you had to build your own stuff with Hadoop. Yeah, yeah. So you've lived it. The telcos don't have the same problem. They actually got backed into the data from the from being in the voice business and then the data business. So the data came after the the voice. So you know, what's the motivation behind uh, data turret? They'll tell us a little bit more. It, it, uh, it's exactly what you say. Actually, you know, going through the twelve years at Yahoo and and really we 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 learned big data the hard way, making mistakes month after month about how to do this thing right. Right? We didn't have the we didn't have the money, and then we found out that actually proprietary systems, uh, off-the-shelf system that, that we thought were available really couldn't do the job. So we had to invent our own technology to deal with the kind of data processing that we had. I mean, at some point, you know, Yahoo had a billion users using Yahoo at any given point in time, right? And the amount of impressions, the amount of clicks, the amount of activities that a billion users have onto the system and all of the log files that you have to process to understand what's going on. Because on the other side of that, we need to be able to understand all those activities in order to sell to our advertisers, slice and dice behaviors and users and so on. And we, we didn't have the technology to do that. The only thing we knew how to do was to have these cheap racks of cheap servers that we were using to serve web pages. And we turned to that to say, this is what we're going to need to do to solve these big data problems. And so the idea of, okay, we need to take this big problem and divide it into small pieces so that we can run on these cheap servers sort of became the, the core tenet of how we do distributed processing that became Hadoop at the end of the day, right? Yeah, you Later became on. a big data company because you were big data full, as we say, you didn't have a, you weren't building software to solve someone else's problem. Exactly. You had your own problem, you had a exactly. lot of data. You were full with data. Exactly. <laughs> had to go on a data diet, as you, uh, to your point. You and, gotta and had to trim down that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and no one to turn to. Yeah. And, I mean, and that was no the one interesting to turn thing. to. All right, so let's tech, let's spin this around for Mobile World Congress, because the big theme is, obviously we all know what device is, and in fact, we just released here on theCUBE earlier this morning, Peter Burris um, pre-announced our new um, research initiative called IOTP. Um, which stands for Internet of Things and People. Mm -hmm. And so now you add the complexity of people devices, whether that's going to be some sort of you know, the watch, uh, phones, right. Right. anything that's around right. them. Uh, that adds to the industrial aspect of turbines and whatnot. Internet of Things is a new edge architecture. Yes. So the data tsunami coming, besides the challenges of telcos to provision these devices, are going to be very challenging. Mm. So that, the question I want to ask you guys is how do you see this evolving because you have certainly connectivity. Yeah, you know, low latency, you know, small little data coming from the windmills or whatever versus big high dense bandwidth mobility. And then you got network core issues, right? So how does this going to look like? I mean, where does the data piece fit in there? Because all aspects of this will have data. What's your thoughts on this end-to-end -end architecture, Fu? Tell us about your, your impression and conversations you've had. Yeah, uh, first of all, I, I think data will exist everywhere, on, on the fringe, in the middle, at, 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 at the center, and, and there's going to be data analytics and processing and every path of that. The challenge will be to kind of figure out what part of processing do you put on the fringe, what part do you put at the center, and I think that's a fluid thing that is going to be constantly changing. Going back to the, the telcos, you know, we've had numbers of conversations with telcos, and yes, we're helping them right now with their current, you know, set of issues around capacity management, billing, all those things, but they are also looking to the next step in their business. They're making all this money from provisioning, but, you know, they know they sit on top of this massive amount of really valuable data from their customers. Mm -hmm. Every cell phone is sending them all of this data, 
And so there's a huge opportunity for them to monetize or, or, or really produce value back to their customers. And that could come in form of offers to customers. But now you, you, you're talking about massive analytics targeting that is also real time because if, if you're sending an offer to someone at a particular location, if you do that slowly <laughs> or in batch and you give them an offer 10 minutes yeah. later, they're no longer where they are, they're 10 well, minutes this, away, this, right? Well, first, the two questions on the follow up on that. One, do they know they have a data advantage opportunity here? Do they know that data mm. is potentially a competitive advantage? They, they, from our conversation, they absolutely do. They're just mm -hmm. trying to figure out, so what do we do here? It's new to them. All right, right? so I want to get both your perspective. Guy, I want you to weigh in on this one, because this is another theme that's come out of the, the, the reporting of, and analysis from Overall Congress. And this has come also from the cloud side as well. Integration now is more important than ever because, for instance, they might have an Oracle, uh, there their, might be Oracle databases outside their network that mm -hmm. they might want to tap into. So tapping other people's data, not just what they can get, the That's telcos, right. That's right. Uh, is going to be important. So how do you guys see the integration aspect? Are we top of the first inning, national anthem going on? I mean, where are we on this, on the integration? There's a pregame, or what, what's, where, what, what, yeah, what they're, inning they're, are we in on this? Yeah, yeah, we're definitely not on the home run on it. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, our friend and, and your friend, Steve Manley, um, you know, I, I sat down with him and I gave him a briefing on what we were doing. He was looking, it was blown away by the technology and the opportunity, but he was certainly saying, but the challenge is the diversity of the data types, you know, mm -hmm. and then where they're going to be. Uh, um, autonomic cars, you know, um, each manufacturer will tell the car behind it what it just experienced, mm -hmm. but the question is when will a Tesla tell a Range Rover, tell a BMW? And so you have actually done Because they have different right? platforms, it's That's different exactly. stacks, it's a nightmare. Right, so in other words... Um, Interoperability. Whether and whether it's going to be open APIs, whether it's technologies like Kafka, but the integration of that and making sure that you can do transformation and then normalize it and drive it forward. Um, and, it, and it's kind of interesting, you know, you mentioned the, the telco space and do they understand it. In some respects, what Foo went through with Yahoo, in other words, you go to a web page, you pull it up, it knows you because of a cookie and it figures out and then sells advertising to you on that page. Mm -hmm. Now think about you as a location and you're walking past a Starbucks and they want to sell you a, a coffee for 10 cents less than they would normally do. They need to know you're there then. Right. And this is the thing, and this is why real time is going to be so critical. And similarly, like I said, you look out the window and you see DHL or UPS or FedEx drones out the window. You, you not only have a an insight issue, you also have a security issue, you have a compliance yeah. issue, you have a locational issue. I, I think you're onto something. I think I actually had this conversation with Steve Manley at EMC World last year around time series data. Mm. So this is interesting. So like, everyone wants a story thing, but it actually might not be worth anything <laughs> anymore, right? Because right? if the drone is delivering your package or whatever real time data is in real time, it's really important right there in real time or right. near real time. Right. It might not be worth anything after. Yeah. Well, but yet a purchase at a store at a, at a time might be worth knowing that as a record to pull in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's like, the, exactly. there's a notion of data that's interesting. And, and I think Jeff, and again, Foo's the expert in this. I'm still running up onto it. Um, it's just a pet hobby and obsession of mine, but you know, the, the, the market has this term ETL, you know, in other words, extract, transform, yeah. land, uh, or load. But in essence, it's always talked about an at rest or batch. So in other words, I get the data, transform it, drop it, and then I have a look at it. We're going upside down. So the idea now is to actually extract, transform, insight, action, then land it. So in other words, get the value out of the fresh data before it hits the data lake. Yeah. Because if it's hit the data lake, by default, it's actually stale. Yeah. And actually, then there's the fascination of saying, if you're delivering real-time data to a person, you can't think fast enough to actually make a, a live decision. So therefore, you've almost got any information that comes to you has to tear out. So it comes to a process, yeah. you get that fresh use of it, and then it drops into a data lake. And so I think there's use in both, but I think what will you see in the market, and, and uh, you know, again, you've experienced mm -hmm. the disk to flash yeah. momentum that happened last year. You're going to see that from a data source from uh, at rest to batch to real time data streams on applications next year. So I think this year is the formative year and back to your, you know, get it right, get the integration right, yeah. make sure your APIs are there talking to the right technologies. I think everything's going to be exciting this year and new and fresh and people really want to do it. Next year is going to be the year where you're going to see an absolute uh, change in the guards. Yeah, and then also the SLA requirements are going to start to get into this when you start looking at integration. You're, you're absolutely right, actually. The, 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 the SLA part is actually very, very uh, important here because 
as you move analytics from this batch world where it has, you know, you do it once a day and if it dies, it's okay because you do it again, to where it is now continuous, 24 by 7, yeah. giving you insight continuously about your business, your people, their services, and so on, then all of a sudden it has to have the same uh, characteristics as as your business, which is it's 24 by 7, it can never go down, it can never lose data. So all of a sudden you're putting tremendous requirement on an analytic system, which has all the way from the beginning of history till now been a very relaxed batch thing, yeah. to all of a sudden being something that is enterprise grade 24 by 7. And actually, and I think that that's actually where um, it's going to be the toughest nut to crack. We'll talk about some of the things that you've learned, and, and pretend for a second, let's pretend that you, you're not the co-founder of Data Turn, and, yeah. and Guy and you're teamed up, you guys run a telco, let's just make one up, Verizon, or yeah. AT&T, or pick one. And you sit there saying, okay, you got the keys to the kingdom, and you can do whatever you want. You could be <laughs> Donald Trump, or you could be whoever you want, you can fire everybody, or you can take it over and, and run it. What would you do? I mean, because you know you got IoT, yeah. So there's some business model innovation opportunities. I want you to put the, the technical uh, hat on plus knowing what you know around the business model opportunities. What do you do? I mean, you know IoT's an opportunity. Amazon's going after that heavily. Yeah. Do you bolt the cloud together? Do you go after Amazon? Do you co-opt Amazon? Do you co-integrate? Do you grab the IoT? Do you use the data? I mean, given where we are today, what's the best move if we were cons consulting the God, telcos. you know, I, I, I will be the last person to be talking about giving advice to a telco, but since we are, we own our own telco here. <laughs> yeah, and, we own our own telco. In the, and and in we're pretending, I, I would say the following, uh, you know, uh, IOT is going to happen, right? The, if, you know, earlier when I say a billion people, that's just human beings. Once you now talk about sensor and you can program how many times they can send you data per second, then the, the growth in volume is, is immense, right? Um, I think there's a huge opportunity as a telco in terms of the, uh, the data that they have available and the insight that they could have about what's going on. Um, that is not easy. I don't think that as a telco, in the, in the current DNA of a telco, I can go ahead and, and do all that analytics and, and really open up my business to, to, to the data insight layer. I would partner uh, and, and well, find remember, a way. We, you know, if we're, if we're consulting, we're going to sit around and say, hey, you know, we have, what do we have? We have relationship with the consumer. That's right. We have big marketing budgets. We yeah. can talk to them directly. We have access to their device. But you'll bifurcate the business. I mean, uh, and again, we we're, yeah. we're in the boardroom here. Yeah. This yeah. is nothing more than that. Yeah. But, but I would look at it and say, look, you've got a consumer business. The same as in IoT. There's yeah. really, for me, there's three parts of IoT. The, there is the bit that I love, which you can geek out, which is basically the consumer market, which there's no money in for a large scale tenor, <laughs> you know, uh, enterprise. Um, and then you have the uh, industrialization of IT, which is I've got a leaky pipe and I want a, um, a hardened device, ruggedized, which is Wi-Fi. So now as a telco, I could create a IoT cloud yeah. that allows me to put these devices out there. And in fact, um, I use Arlo, you know, yeah. uh, the little cameras, and they've got one now where I can basically float it with its own cellular signal. So it's, it's its own cell phone. That's yeah. a great use of IoT for that. Yeah. You know, and then you step to the consumer side of I'm, I've got a cell phone, and then what I would do is literally, in essence, rip off what Yahoo did in the early days and say, I'm now the new browser, but the person's a browser. So in other words, follow the location, follow where it is, and then basically do locational based By the way, you'd have, to via, exactly. you'd have to license the patent from our earlier guest yesterday, Willie Lee, because he's got the patent on, on personal um, firewall for, for uh, personal server. No, he's awesome. built a mo mobile personal server. Yeah. Uh, but this is the opportunity around wireless. Why well, I love the, the confusion, but the opportunity around wireless right now is you can get bandwidth uh, um, at high capacity. You have millimeter wave for, but it doesn't go through walls, but you have other diverse frequencies and, and spectrum, for instance. You can blend it all together to have that little drip signal, if you will, going into the cloud from the leaky pipe. Yeah. Or if you need turbine full fat pipe, you can maybe yeah. go somewhere. So I think this is an interesting opportunity. To and they're going to end up watching the data centers as well. I mean, there is a, there's still the open gamut of saying, are customers going to continue to support their own data centers or are there going to be uh, one to 100 data centers out there? And then how does a, um, a cellular manufacturer or a, a telco play into that? And do they want to be that guy or not? Right. Guy Fu, thanks for coming in. I want to give you guys a chance to 
uh, put a plug in for Data Turret, for, and thanks for sharing some great commentary on the industry. So, you know, what's up with you guys? Give us the update. You're hiring, you're growing. What are you guys doing? Customers, what's the update? Technology innovations. So, so we've got a release coming out tomorrow, which is a momentum release. I can't talk too much about the numbers, but in, in essence, um, from a fact base, we have a thing called Apache Apex. So it's the uh, it's open source, so you can use our product as, as free. Um, but that's growing like gangbusters um, from a, a top level project that's actually the fastest growing one and it's only been out for seven months. Yep. Uh, we just broke through 50,000 users on it. Uh, from our product, we're doing very well on the back of it. So we actually have subscription for the production side. So, so we the revenue is a subscription model. That's right. Yeah, and, and we meet both sides. So in other words, for the engineer who writes it, you've got the open source. And then when you put it into production from the operations side, you can then license our products to enable you to manage and easy. So when it gets commercialized, you pay as you go when you yeah, use and, it. And you don't have to if you yeah. don't want to. Yeah, I mean, it. it's just, you know, so you've got all the tools to do it. But we focus from a products group of time to value, total cost of ownership. We're trying to bring Hadoop and uh, real scale, uh, real time streaming to the masses. So what's the technology uh, uh, innovation? What's the, uh, what's the disruptive enabler for you guys? You know, uh, I, I think we talked about it, right? The, the, uh, you, you got two really competing trends going on here. On one side, data is getting more and more and more massive. So it's going to take longer and longer to process it. And yet at the other side, business wants to be able to get data, have insight, and take action sub-second. So how do you get both at the same time? That's really the magic of the technology. Thanks for coming. Great to meet you. I'd love, love to talk about the old Yahoo days. Uh, total throwback, uh, Web 1.0, great time in history, pre-bubble bursting, uh, greatness happening in the valley and all around the world. And I remember those days clearly. Guy, great to see you. Congratulations on the new CEO opportunity. And uh, great to have, the, have you on theCUBE. This is theCUBE bringing the coverage and commentary and reaction of Mobile World Congress here in California. As everyone goes to bed in Barcelona, we're just getting down to the end of our day here in the afternoon in California. We'll be right back with more after this short break.